Hi, everyone. We're uh, here on this live stream for Balance Forward to teach you all how to do a Balance Forward. Thank you so much for attending, being here. Let us know uh, in the uh, in the comments section here where you're where you're tuning in from. Uh, we'd love to uh, uh, connect on the comments. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free during this uh, live stream, please feel free to throw them in the comments section there. So um, uh, looking forward to getting through this with you. Uh, my name is Paul Edney. I am the Vice President of Marketing and Sales for Cordine. Um, I'll be kind of on the back end here while our uh, Jedis, Heather and Thomas, um, take you through this uh, live stream. And I'll let them introduce themselves in a second. Just a quick note to say this will be recorded. And so you'll be able to look back and see this on our channel on YouTube. It's Cordine Aviation on YouTube. So feel free to uh, come back if you if you want to go over anything that uh, uh, Thomas and Heather cover in the next short while. We're going to try and get through this in about half an hour, 40 minutes of presentation time, and then we'll have a good 15, 20 minutes, or as long as you guys want to stay on uh, question time after that. So I will pass it on to Heather to introduce herself. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Hope you're all staying safe and comfortable out there. Uh, my name is Heather McCarthy. I am the VP of Service and Operations. Been with Cordine for about seven years now. Over to you, Thomas. Hey, everyone. My name is Thomas. I'm the manager of customer support here at Cordine. And uh, we're going to be helping you do some, uh, get some best practices for entering balance forwards. So let's dive into it, Paul. Right on, here you go, I'll throw your, there we go. I'll just go straight to full screen for you, Thomas, far away. So here is most likely, if you're watching this webinar, what you have. You have a bunch of time in a paper logbook and you're wondering how do I get this into Log10 Pro? Maybe you're new to an electronic logbook and you wanna put, start with your all your previous data Maybe you've been using Log10 Pro a while and you're just thinking, it's time I put that paper logbook in Log10 Pro. We're gonna show you some best tips on how to do this kind of stuff. A lot of quest a lot of times people ask us, how do I enter a, a balance forward in Log10 Pro? Well, the simple answer is it's just like any other entry. It's entering a balance forward is no different than entering a single flight. You add a new flight. It's just gonna have more total time. It's gonna have more seat time. It's gonna have more everything. Um, there are a couple tricks, which I'll get into a little bit later, which you might wanna verify when you're entering a balance forward, but the how is, is no different than any other entry you would make in your logbook. What you enter into your balance forward is where it gets a little bit more tricky. And that's what we're gonna be talking most about here uh, in this webinar. What you enter, is this single line here at the bottom. But you can't enter that as just one single line in Log10 Pro, because most likely that single line is gonna contain all sorts of types of aircraft. It's gonna contain multi-engine, it's gonna contain single engine, it might even contain some simulator time. So since type information is so important in an electronic logbook, it's you're gonna wanna split that balance forward up into multiple entries. And that's the hard part. And that's the, you know, that's where you have to get um, the calculator out and start going through your paper logbook. But you only have to do this once. Once all this data is in Log10 Pro, if you wanna see how much multi-engine land time you have, no problem. If you wanna see how much PIC turbine time you have, no problem. You can do all this stuff with a few clicks of Log10 Pro. So let's just start out with the gold standard of how you would put this information in Log10 Pro. Here's an example of somebody who has 172 time, PA44 seminal time, C208 time, Beach 1900, citation, they entered all their balance forwards per the specific type of aircraft that they flew. If you can, 
this would be the bit of the gold standard for balance forward entries. If you enter your type information this way, Log10 Pro knows that it's a single engine LAN piston, that it's a multi-engine LAN piston, that it's a single engine LAN turbine. All that information is there by the type information. This is important in Log10 Pro because all the reports, not all the reports, but most of the reports are gonna ask, they're gonna look in the types section for, is it turbine, is it multi-engine LAN? And if your balance forward is not specified correctly, then a lot of the reports will not be able to read the balance forward. And that will be blank when you generate the report. The other thing you're gonna notice here is that simulator is separated into a separate balance forward. This is important in Log10 Pro, not only for balance forwards, but just for logging in general. We always recommend that simulator entries be separate entries from flight entries. So if you have any simulator time, then you would want to separate that into a separate balance forward too. So this is the gold standard, but maybe you know maybe you have fifty to one hundred types of aircraft, and this is a bit a bit much, and you don't really need that granular information. So we're going to show you some ways that maybe you can look at uh, enter some balance forwards at some different levels of granularity. Here's another example. And this is about the most basic level that we recommend entering your balance forwards. This is the same information from the previous logbook, but this is separated into single engine land, multi-engine land, and simulator entries. So this person decided to well, this person, this is a made up logbook that we put together for this webinar, but we're gonna be using the same data throughout this webinar. So we're pretending that it's one person's logbook. This person has three entries for all their balance forwards, and then it just goes into the rest of their flying here. Pretty basic. It's gonna work for a lot of reports. And it might be all you need. If you're at a point in your career where you're not gonna be applying for a lot of job applications, this might be all you need. And this will work for a lot of people. Let's look at this a little further and see how this is set up. I said that there might be some specific things you're gonna wanna do when you enter balance forward different from a single flight. <clears throat> One of the things that you're gonna definitely wanna do when you enter a balance forward is you're gonna want to enter a single date, you must enter a single date. Uh, you can't put a range of dates in Log10 Pro. So what we recommend doing is picking the date, the last date of the flying for that balance forward. The other thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna make sure your autofill settings are off. You don't wanna be accidentally autofilling times when you're entering your balance forwards. On the Mac, you can do this in preferences and time. You would just go through here and uncheck all these little boxes that are for the autofills. And now you're set up. Oh, the other thing I wanna mention is if you have any custom time fields, and that this logbook doesn't have any, but you might wanna double check that too, that those are not autofilling. On iOS, you can do this too. Um, you go into, on iOS, you would go into more settings, time calculations, autofill times, and you would just make sure all the times there are deselected. Everything we're doing here is also done on iOS, can also be done the same way on iOS. For presentation purposes though, we're just showing mostly Mac, uh, but everything can be done on iOS. So what did this person do? They split up between single engine land and multi-engine land. It's more than just splitting up time. You need to split up your night. You need to split up your PIC, your SIC, your dual receipt, your cross country, all the times that you want in your logbook. Besides just splitting up night, if you have multiple seat times in an entry, you may need to define that further. For instance, if we look at this multi-engine land entry here, it has 373 hours of night, it has 500 hours of 
PIC and 400 some hours of SIC, how much, S how much PIC nighttime is in this entry? We don't know just from those two pieces of information. What you're gonna to need to do in Log10 Pro is go to the specific night fields. On the Mac, you can do this in preferences, time, advanced, and then you will see there are specific night fields, PIC night, SIC night, dual received night, P1US night, there's cross country night. This could help you with your balance forwards. There's also relief night if you happen to have any relief in your balance forward entry. Again, on iOS, this, this is found in just the regular configure field settings for your times. So these will help you define how much specific night you have in your seat time. So for this entry, you can further clarify that of this 373.2, 213.7 is PIC night, 158.2 is SIC night, and there's even 1.3 hours of dual received here. Some other things you might wanna split up between your balance forwards, takeoffs, approaches, anything else you want, you can split them up. And this will be good, like I said, for a lot of people. But let's say that you wanted to figure out, well, how much uh, PIC turbine time do I have? In that case, you might wanna get a little bit more specific with your balance forwards. And I'm gonna pass it off to Heather to show that. All right, Heather, you got your uh, screen there up and running. Awesome, thank you, Paul, and thank you, Thomas. Um, just to take a quick step back, I wanted to give a quick demonstration of how to set up a smart group so that you can view any existing balance forwards or future balance forwards that you might be putting into your logbook. There are a number of different criteria that you could use, obviously, um, but in this logbook, for example, there's over 2,500 flights. Since the balance, balance forwards are existing at the earliest entries, I wanna be able to isolate these and view them quickly just by using a smart group. So I'm going to right click on smart groups, create a new smart group and rename it balance forward and for most intents and purposes if you select criteria where time total time is greater than 24 hours this should capture the majority of your balance forward entries um, you might also want to add in an additional criteria where time simulator time is greater than 24 hours and one thing to note here when you're looking for more than one criteria that don't necessarily have to be present within the same flight you do want to make sure to change this match all of the following criteria to match any of the following criteria we're going to select ok and now this is going to show us the isolated balance forward entries that we're showing for this example like i said there's a multitude of other ways that you could quickly and easily identify these. Um, but for most intents and purposes, this will get you the results that you're going to need. So as Thomas had mentioned, perhaps you wanted to further separate out your multi-engine and single engine land entries into different types of engines, engine types. So we wanna see perhaps a single engine land piston and single engine land turbine. The first step to be able to see these, as Thomas mentioned before, would be to make sure we have the types set up uh, ahead of time so that we can use those to easily distinguish the, the differences between these two. Um, we do already have these types set up. So for example, for single engine, single engine land piston, we just went ahead and made a new entry in the types tab, named it the generic SEL piston, but we did make sure to define the engine type as reciprocating, category as airplane, and class as single engine land. For everything with the one exception of simulator types, these three fields you're gonna need at minimum for all of your type entries and all of your hours to be able to populate into the reports and summaries correctly. So here's our generic single engine piston. Here's our generic single engine land. So far it just has airplane and SEL land. For SEL turbine, 
uh, in this example, we're going to pretend like all of the turbine hours were done in a C208 caravan. Um, so you can see that these attributes are already preset and a shortcut for how we did this, I'm gonna demonstrate really quick. So I tapped or clicked on the plus button in the bottom left-hand corner. In the new type, I just can type in C208. And what that does is that pre-populates all of the attributes here, including the very important engine type category and class. And then what we did was we just renamed it manually from C208 to SEL turbine. Um, this, of course, is completely up to you how you want to have these set up. But the more defined we've found that the balance forward entries can be, the easier they are to identify as balance forwards, the, the better off um, your logbook will be, that you'll be able to distinguish which is what. So I'm going to delete that and go back to the logbook. So we're going to start with our single engine land. And as Thomas mentioned earlier, the hardest part of getting balance forward entries in is going to be the homework of actually sitting down and getting out the calculator and figuring out these breakdowns. You might already have them from like a IACRA or 8710 application. You might already have them for insurance or rating applications. Um, however you get to those numbers, that's gonna be the majority of the work that you get. And then once you actually get that divided up and entered into log 10, you're gonna be able to forget about it and your totals for the future will always be able to populate almost immediately. You'll be able to find basically any point of data that you want for balance forwards and individual flights. Um, so to get back on track really quickly here for single engine, we're gonna create a new entry. And I believe the date was 1-8-2008. Uh, aircraft type, we're gonna go ahead and use that SEL piston that we pre-set up. And I'm going to type out the calculations that we had made for this example. So out of all of those single engine land hours, we know that 139.6 were total time. There was 28 total nighttime hours, 95.4 total PIC hours. There were zero SIC hours. Dual received is 44.2. Cross country hours was 65. Actual instrument 12.8 simulated instrument 4.6, zero simulator hours because we're going to have those separated out. We do also know that of these 28 nighttime hours, we have 20 of those that were done as PIC, zero SIC, and eight of those were done as dual received night. So a really quick audit as you are filling in the conditions of flight by seat, uh, specifically PIC night, dual received night, is you want to do a quick cross-reference double check to make sure that the cumulative hours for each of these night fields is not greater than the total number of night hours for this entry. Uh, the same thing goes for the PIC for the seat times. So you want to make sure that the 20 hours of PIC night and the eight hours of dual received night aren't greater than the individual seats that you're making these entries for. Now, when we go back to our balance forward smart group, we can see single engine land and single engine piston. One thing you might notice right away is that the total time for the balance forward entry as well as the total time for the logbook has increased. It hasn't exactly doubled, but the new entry that we just made added an additional almost 140 hours to the totals. So the last step that we do to make sure that these get all separated out and accounted for correctly is we have to now subtract those 139.6 hours from the total time and so on and so forth for each of the columns and points of data to make sure that they add up to the totals. So the, since we separated out single engine piston, I went ahead and made, I pre-subtracted so we didn't have to sit here and painstakingly watch me use my calculator. Um, I subtracted those hours from the single engine line generic entry, I renamed it to single, I didn't rename it, excuse me, I changed the type to single engine piston. And now our total single engine hours are still 199.90. And our balance forward hours are the same as when we started. So 1,234.1 and our total time is the same as well. And for most people, this will be the additional, the, 
the end of the additional details that you might need. Uh, but let's say that your turbine time has both, both turboprop and jet, and you want to distinguish between those two. And that's going to be pretty similar to what we've done already with the single engine entry. But we're going to use multi-engine turbine now as an example. So we've separated out single engine piston, single engine turbine, and now we've got multi-engine piston, multi-engine turbine. Uh, again, the first thing we're going to want to do for setting up our types is we're going to make sure that we have the turboprop and turbojet within our types tab. So for MEL turboprop, we just went ahead and used King Air as an example. So I created that new entry and I had typed in BE9 Lima for the King Air, got the attributes to populate, and then renamed it to the generic MEL turboprop. And for the MEL jet, I just went ahead and manually updated engine type to jet, category airplane, and class to multi-engine land. So that now we have those two entries and we're going to create a new smart group to view the multi-engine balance forward. F, and knowing the way that this particular logbook is set up, I know that we can designate aircraft type contains MEL, and that should single out all of those multi-engine balance forward entries. So this is the one we're gonna pay attention to. And if you bear with me for just one moment, I'll get my third logbook open. For best. Okay. And just like magic, uh, we went ahead and updated the turbine into their respective jet and turboprop hours. Again, double checking that each of the times that we separated out continued to add up to the previous totals that had been combined. Uh, so the multi-engine balance forward is staying at 1034.2. We're still at 199.9 for a single engine. The total balance forward uh, hours are the same as well as all entries. So as you're going through and entering these in, it's just a sort of cross-reference, cross-check to make sure that these are all still adding up to the totals that you're intending and there's no accidental uh, doubling or additional hours that you didn't want to have in there. So while we're keeping it fairly simple for this webinar with all the aircraft multi-engine land and single engine land types, there are just a few other attributes that you may need to separate out. And I was gonna quickly show you in case it went too fast in the examples, uh, the different kinds of engine types that you can select. Maybe instead of just reciprocating, you want to further separate that out into two cycle, four cycle, um, or maybe perhaps you have turbofan, turboprop, turbo shaft. You can designate those in any of these fields. So the drop down menus on Mac you can just scroll through. There's a couple of different simulator types. Uh, so we have a, a generic simulator, which shows up in most of the reports and summaries. There's also a selection for PCATD, as well as training device, and the different classes. So we can have MEL land and C, SEL land and C. Uh, there's also airship, pre boom gyroplane, uh, a number of different things that you could designate here. And again, for 90% of everybody putting in these balance board entries, this will be as much detail as you're going to need. Uh, but let's say you're maybe applying for a job and the recruiter is asking for some very specific information. In that case, I'm going to turn it over to Thomas to show how you can get even more granularity. Okay, there you go, Thomas, you're up. Yeah, so as Heather mentioned, what she did is gonna work for, I would say 90, over 90% of the people out there. Um, but there are some situations where you might need to separate your balance boards even a little bit more. What you're looking at here is an actual um, report that we designed for an airline recruiter and this is the report that they give 
uh, their um, potential hirees to fill out. Um, in this report, you're going to notice that um, they want some really specific information. They want, um, of course, Knight PIC, no problem. We just told you how to do that. Um, but they want also want cross country split up in PIC. They even want cross country night PIC. So this starts to get really specific with the types of uh, with the seat time data. And if you run across a situation like this, what you're going to need to your balance boards is you're actually going to need to split them up not only by type of aircraft but also by seat position. So for example, let's say this single engine piston right here, you wanted to split it up uh, by both PIC and dual receive, or let's say this um, multi-engine jet here, you wanted to split it up by PIC and SIC. Then you would have to make actually two MEL jet um, entries. I'll just duplicate this one. I'll put it back to the, let me see what the date was. We're going to make it the same date. And now we have two MEL jets. And what you would do is you would split this up. You would split the to the this SAC time you would put in the new one. And you would split up all the other times, like the total time the cross country time, the instrument time, and you would have two entries for MEL jet, uh, one with PIC data, one with SIC data. This is a bit of a fringe case, but we just wanted to put it out there in case you at, were asked for data like uh, that's in that report. Um, there are some other, when, go ahead, Paul. I was just gonna say one thing that we also wanted to say when you get to this type of, uh, granularity that our support team's totally willing and available to help with any any of this kind of stuff. Yeah, of course. Thank you. The definitely we we deal with the questions like this all the time and definitely contact us if you ever have trouble filling in any of this data or confusion about how to fill it out. Um, I also wanted to mention that for this webinar we we were pretty basic with just uh, airplane um, land airplanes, but there may be some other situations to where you would need to have uh, some basic uh, balance forward information. Say you have rotorcraft time, you probably want to put that in a separate balance forward. Say you have single engine C, multi engine C time, those might want to be a separate balance forward. So um, for this webinar purposes, we we just stuck to single engine, multi engine land and simulated time. But there are there are glider time. There are situations out there where you might need separate balance boards from everything we mentioned. Um, and as we kind of talked about throughout this, um, this is all possible on iOS too. And uh, I think Heather is going to show you some uh, what it would look like a little bit on iOS. Great, I'm gonna switch over, here we go. Bingo, Heather's iPad, Woohoo! Thanks everybody. Uh, so this is just a really simple demonstration. I know we had a question from pilot Kayan, Kaya Yen, <laughs> uh, about how this is the same for the iPad version and virtually everything is the same. It just looks a little different and the data entry is a little different. So you're still gonna be entering single entries for each of your balance forward uh, hours that you want to distinguish. Um, and then I also wanted to demonstrate for setting up, like Thomas showed at the very beginning, the specific types as the golden standard. If you wanted to say you already know how much balance forward time you have in a C-150, you can come here to your types tab and then type on, sorry, tap on the plus button over here, and I'm gonna type in C150, I'm out of nine. There we go. And that's going to pre-populate 
all the attributes that you'd like, specifically the most important category, engine type, and class. If you wanted to further distinguish this for your balance forward entries, you can add in the additional BF. And I believe there's an additional way to find and search for types. Uh, let's say we had that King Air, but we weren't quite sure of what that ICAO code was for the King Air in the database. If we type in King Air to our search field and look for all types, we can now find the BE9 Lima and add that as a new type and then add the additional distinction of balance forward if we like. Yeah, I noticed, Heather, there that you drag down, is it, to, to open up the search field? Yes. So when you first go into most of these tabs, you'll see a list of things that you have. And if you drag down, especially it's really useful also in the logbook tab, you can drag down to get a search field. In types, you drag down to get a search field. And then there's the two tabs up here. So you can search within the types you already have existing or the records in the other uh, tabs, or you can search within our internal database. Definitely, yeah, been, I just, definitely been caught by that before. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and going, where is this type? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I also wanted to mention that uh, the database that we have in Logtim Pro is the ICAO database of aircraft types. So um, that's what the app gets loaded with. And as Heather mentioned, even if you don't know the ICAO code for the aircraft, type in, in like the just the, the word Seminole or King Air or Citation uh, will search as well. And so that's a really powerful tool, that search field that you're showing. Yeah, so we got Seminole as the PA44. Uh, before I forget, there was something I left out of my previous presentation, and that was showing the distinguished numbers that we set up so nicely in some of our reports. So I'll just go ahead and demo this on iOS since I have the screen sharing to start with. And we're looking at our balance forward groups. So we've got a really nice breakdown, MEL jet, MEL piston, turboprop, single engine piston, single engine turbine, and simulator. Well, now we want to have this go to work for us and run it in a report. Maybe it's requested from a recruiter uh, or somebody who's giving you a check ride. If we go to reports and let's look at the flight experience resume, that's going to give us an option to configure the report. And for filter group, you may not know, you can select any of the groups that you have back there in the radar tab. So I'm going to filter this to just our balance forward entries for brevity. And I'm going to tap on generate. <laughs> this is going to look a little bright. Cover your eyes. Don't do this in a, in a nighttime dark cockpit. Uh, so now we see a breakdown of all of these hours. We've got turbine time, jet time, got MEL, SEL, cross-country night. There's a bunch of different ways to display this data. Another interesting breakdown would be in our Cordine International Logbook. Let's go ahead and configure again for balance forward and generate. And so now we can see those specific times that we and you will spend the, the time doing the homework of getting these in, now you'll always have these numbers and they'll show up in the appropriate places. So we've got total time, ASEL, AMEL, further broken down into jet, turboprop, rotocraft if you have it, um, and then you'll be able to see the individual fields as well. Can you, Heather, quickly just show that Bounce Forward smart group and the setup for that? I know you went through it quickly before, but I think it'd be nice for people to just have a quick view of how you set that up. For iOS, absolutely. So selecting any of the groups from the radar tab, if you tap on the I, that will give you the configuration for that group. So we can see here, the name of the group is balance forward, static date range in last and next, and show we've left just as their defaults. Um, display as total time, that's something that you can adjust depending on what you wanna see in that radar tab next to the groups. So maybe you don't want to see total time, maybe it's a simulator uh, balance forward or smart group that you want to see sim hours, then you'd want to select simulator time. There's options with that as well. Um, match any of the criteria because again, we have those two criteria of total time and simulator. Um, and then the criteria field is the same as Mac, it just looks a little different and then the UI UX is just slightly different. So we still have category 
time key, you can choose any of your custom times or you can choose the times that we have down here. Um, operator, you can do greater than like we had and value, it would be 24 hours just as a sort of catch all. Again, you can specify this to any other point of data that you may have already entered or know about. One of my favorite fields uh, is the, du the custom duty fields. Um, so if this were my logbook and I was doing balance forward entries, um, I don't think I have any flights personally that are greater than 24 hours, but because I like to put in that extra detail, I would create a custom duty field and name it balance forward and then turn that toggle on. So it's a on off toggle. And then we just need the one criteria in a smart group to be able to isolate those. That's quite cool. Sorry uh, to put you on the spot, but. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know what's coming here. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you could, maybe you could show, show how to how to put that custom field in. Yeah, you guys ready? <laughs> um, so I am going to view the flights in here because these are all of our balance forward entries. And let's start with simulator just to view the details. You might notice that we now get a action button at the top of the screen. It's a little hard to distinguish um, this detail. Right. The the three red dots, yeah. Yeah, so we've got the three red dots, and I can configure fields. So down in duty, I really like that you're able to do this within the radar tab. You can configure individual fields for your logbook. Um, so we've got a number of custom duty fields here. I'm going to arbitrarily pick custom 13. I'm going to rename it to, let's just call BF for balance forward. And I'm going to turn that toggle on. And now should be able to duty balance forward. So I'm going to mark this one. And let's go ahead and just do the next two to demonstrate. So now we've marked three of these with that custom duty field. If I go to the radar tab and tap on this plus button, upper left-hand corner, new smart group. I'm going to say new BF, and then leave everything blank and just the one criteria of duty key is new BF yeah, that's fun, yeah. is on. And now we go back to view it. It's going to show those three flights that we turn the toggle on. So just a one less criteria to put in and once you have any of the custom fields you can there's an unlimited way to be able to customize your entries and balance forwards and things so whatever makes the most sense to you whatever feels the easiest this is just my personal favorite uh, it's super easy to just flip a toggle on for any of the entries i might be putting and then be able to quickly see it in a smart group yeah, I think that's a great idea in terms of being able to control it yourself. Like you're not making an assumption that there aren't any 24 hour, you know, obviously most of the time there wouldn't be flights over 24 hours, but right. you know, that, that takes us to the flight audit report because that actually has happened before where people have uh, flights over 24 hours and the flight audit report that we just launched uh, actually catches those issues. But uh, we can talk about that in a second. Um, so we have a few questions. Heather, are you are you complete there with what you wanted to add in terms of, yeah? I am, yes, thank you. Awesome, so we had a question from Paul Ellison from Mako. Thank you for um, joining us. And he's saying he's had two issues. One, when he adds a new aircraft type, the new type's not self-populating, for example, in A320-231. Um, and I wondered if you guys could just show, I mean, maybe it's a, an entry thing, any tips on, um, on aircraft types and making sure they enter the data. I'd be happy to demonstrate on, on my iPad unless. Sure. Or I, I got the, I, uh, the Mac open too. If we want to do it on the Mac, either one's fine. Rochambeau. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going. To, go ahead. Let's just go ahead and see what comes up if I type in a <laughs> three two. So now, again, this this is one of the shortcuts from the types tab. 
uh, if I did that too quickly, let me cancel and start again. So I'm gonna go types and then by default, you'll just see recently used at the top. Uh, pulling down on the menu here, I can get that search field. And if I just start typing in A32, I can see all the different variations within that database that we already have pre-programmed. So we can see this A321 designator here is for the A-321. And then I can tap on it and it automatically populates all those attributes. Great. So uh, yeah, Paul, Paul, it's funny actually, because we're delayed a little bit. Paul said on iOS, please. I just, <laughs> I just came up. So um, that's great. Uh, hopefully that helps Paul. So the, the tapping on the types tab and for I, iPhone, you're going to go more and then you'll see the types section. So you can tap types and then the drag down is the key there when to search for the type that you want. So um, uh, just drag down and then you'll see the search field and you can search for the type that you want. And if you yeah, and I, I, saw Paul, I saw Paul's oh. question there. Uh, and then it looks like there's a couple issues. And for the second one, where your balance boards just aren't matching up, um, that might be something where you just want to contact us at support directly, Paul, and we can take care of that. So that would be something where we would have to actually have to look at your data. So um, we can definitely look at both issues if you wanted to reach out to us. Huh. Yeah, so because he's uh, Paul's saying it still doesn't work to be able to find the aircraft types. So there must be something going on there that we can help you with at support. I'll just throw uh, for sure. Yeah, you know you I can contact us at support at cordine.com, or if you want to send your um, data to us as well, which would be ideal um, on iOS. Paul, you want to hit more help contact support and just make sure you're. Um, the toggles turned on to send your logbook through to us and then uh, uh, highlight your issues and and the support team can definitely help you find find that. Heather, you were saying? I don't know that this is relevant to what Paul's experiencing, but if at any time things aren't working quite as you'd expect within the logbook, if something just seems to be off, we do have a repair logbook tool. So it's in the bottom right-hand corner more tab and then under help, the second from the bottom option is repair logbook. And you can run this anytime. It's not going to change anything in your logbook, but if there's any sort of loose ends in the background that need to be tied up um, or things that aren't quite working as you'd expect, it will run through a series of, of self-tests and make any repairs. Um, I think you saw the message said no repairs were necessary. If it did find repairs, it said logbook, it would say logbook repaired. And in that case, we just recommend to keep running that repair logbook tool until you see no repairs necessary. Great. Um, I'm sure, Paul, that uh, the team can definitely help you out with that because it just sounds like it's uh, something we can we can totally sort. Um, and then we had another question here from Heinz Moon Rivera uh, around creating a smart group. You might have to give us a little bit more detail. I uh, created a smart group named Today Duty. It sh shows correct hours, but only shows as one flight. So I guess it's pulling in one flight. I'm not sure about the setting that you have for that smart group, um, but uh, this might be another one. Uh, if you can give us more detail here, great. We can have a look at it. Or uh, please don't hesitate to contact the support team. They're, they're definitely all experts at getting these smart groups set up, can actually set it up and send it to you. So so uh, please don't hesitate to get in touch um, again. Yeah, on, on that one there, um, for the uh, Today Duty smart group, pl yeah, please contact support. But I could take a stab here. I'm guessing maybe the smart group you created is only showing, if you, the, the, the entry with total duty. So for example, if you had four flights and you logged on duty in the first flight and you logged two other flights in the middle and then you logged off duty on the last flight, total duty would actually only be on that last flight because it's calculating all those flights. So it might just be that the smart group is, calcul is picking up that, uh, that one entry that actually totals your duty. Uh, if you're looking at multiple flights, but definitely um, contact us to support and we can look at that further with your logbook data. Yeah, I guess if you if you wanted to see all duty flights for that day, 
Um, I don't know if, again, I'm putting you on the spot, but is have you got a, how, how you do that smart group? Is there a way of? Uh... There, there's several ways, but it would, it would sort of depend on how you log your data. I would, it would be a customizable smart group specific to how you log data. Um, so that was, that's something where smart groups are so flexible. I mean, you, you can use it to like look at your data and filter things in sorts of ways, but it, a lot of it does depend on the kind of data you use. So that would be, yeah, he said it's for six legs. And then um, that looks to be the case. So if you if you want to send us a, some support, I can look at your logbook and then we can um, uh, we can figure out a way that would work for you, filter by day or something like that, by duty day, that we might be able to do something like that. So yeah, reach out to us. Yeah, definitely. Okay, we have another question here from Hans to Hart. Thanks everyone, by the way, for your questions. Thanks for your uh, for for taking part. Um, so Hans says, uh, my logbook's in the iPhone, iPad, and MacBook. Not similar. They're showing different number of flights and hours totals. Uh, is this a sync? Yeah, sounds like it's a sync issue. Um, uh, Thomas, I, I'm guessing that we would need to see his logbook and we could absolutely um, figure out what's going on and troubleshoot the sync situation. I'm assuming, Hans, that you have one of the logbooks that has all of, has the, you know, correct, one of them is the correct um, data. Uh, and then you could send us that one and we could get it set up so that it syncs correctly on all your other devices for sure. That's definitely something our support team can help you with. Yeah, if if the um, if there's if of the if of your devices, if you know which one has the complete data that you want all your devices to have, you can restart iCloud Sync. And then if you just go onto our help page, then um, you there's a, and and click uh, restart iCloud into the search field. You'll see the article that shows you how to restart iCloud Sync. Um, oh, it looks but again, like, yeah. Looks like Hans is getting duplicates as well. I mean, Heather, that's that's something you meant you showed about the repair logbook can often fix that, correct? Yes, absolutely. Um, before the the message gets lost too, when anytime you're dealing with a sync or numbers that aren't quite looking correct, or even if you just want to be extra safe and have a duplicate or triplicate redundancy, uh, it's always one of my personal PSAs to show or demonstrate the in-app backup feature. So for iPhone and iPad, if you go again to that more tab and then settings, there's a backup button or backup option. Uh, you can see there's a couple of backups here in the list already, but if I tap on the plus button in the upper right hand corner, it's going to start creating, it, well, it looks like it already finished, a new backup of all of the logbook data, settings, images, et cetera, and it's gonna store it into your personal iCloud uh, storage so that when those backups are complete, if for any reason you start troubleshooting and anything unexpected happens, uh, you can go back and restore to any of these backups. As an added redundancy, you can swipe to the right on any of these backups and get export options. And that should show you a couple, a share sheet, a bunch of different ways that you can send these either to somebody via text, you can send it to yourself via email, you can save it to files, or if you have Dropbox set up, you can save them there as well. And that's something that we enthusiastically recommend that people take advantage of as often as they like. Uh, the, more, the more you fly, the more you probably wanna do this. Absolutely, so that's more settings, backup, Yes. And then just the plus button in the top right, and that creates a backup to iCloud. Correct. And then Hans is saying that he has uh, um, data on the iPad and iPhone mix. So um, I was going to suggest that he sends uh, the logbook in from both devices to support, and they can have a look at it. Yeah, Thomas, would that, or Heather, would that be their right approach? Yeah, I'd say so. Send us separate help. Send us from each device. Send us your logbook. We'll get it sorted. We'll figure out get emerged all together uh, and we'll get you taken care of with one, get it all syncing together too. So maybe, maybe if it's three, maybe send one from the iPad, the iPhone, and then a third one from the Mac, if you think that's separate as well. So. Yeah. And then we can just merge all and that'd be, that'd be great. 
Yeah, sorry that's happening, Hans, and please, yeah, contact support and send in all three logbooks and we'll sort it out for you. Um, I think we had some other questions come in. Um, uh, is, there a, is there a solution to fill auto duty time in each flight? I'm not quite sure I understand that question. Let me take a look at the writing here. That was the one that you posted previously, yeah. Paul. Mm -hmm. uh, you can, yeah. So you can preset duty uh, parameters, but um, you actually have to click um, into the field to, to have duty populate. Um, one of the reasons that this is the case is, is for, um, a lot of people don't log duty on each flight. So they'll, they'll have, you know, five or six flights in a day. They'll log on duty for the first flight. They'll fly five legs and then they'll log off duty on the last flight. So there is a bit of manual uh, entry to log in duty just because there's no way the app can know on where your duty starts and where your duty stops. But we do make it so that you can do it with just one click. Um, you can go into the duty section and you can fill. And if you, want to show my screen real quick, Paul. I guess I could there you go. demonstrate this. You can set your duty preferences. You can say start on duty 60 minutes before scheduled out or off duty 50 minutes after arrival. And then if you were to add a new flight and you actually had some scheduled times, Let's just make a fake flight here and we'll put in So you with just one click on the Mac, you put your cursor in the field and you hit the space bar. It puts in the parameter that you set. You don't have to type in 1300. You just punch in the, the space bar and it'll autofill the parameter you set. Um, on iOS, uh, there's one click as well. It's for the show clock autofill buttons where it should say use 1300 in that field and you should just be able to click on it. So you can set the parameters, but you do need to go in and do that one click to tell the app when it is, um, when you're on duty and when you're off duty. So that is, that's why it is that way that there's no way to, for it to automatically do it. Otherwise those parameters would be going for every flight. And so that wouldn't, that wouldn't make any sense in a lot of scenarios. Great. Um, one thing I did want to say to everybody on, online now, thanks again for joining us, is um, for anybody who's got iOS only but does have a Mac and wants to try out Log10 Pro, I'm just going to put a, a, a code into the chat that you can use to get um, to get a free three month trial of Log10 Pro for Mac. So I'm just gonna throw that into the, ch uh, into the, uh, into the chat for, for anybody who does wanna try it. We did have a question around um, importing, uh, importing a schedule on iOS. And um, Heather, I thought you could show just the link to um, our partner in that on the iOS. So. Let me just add you to the stream. Yeah. Uh, so the, the option that I chose there was from the logbook tab. So down at the very bottom, we've got radar, fly now, logbook. And then upper left-hand corner, there's the share button. And that's where you'll find the link to Roster Buster uh, where to take a step back, <laughs> importing schedules for iOS right now are done through our affiliate uh, partner Roster Buster, and we do have um, codes as well for them if you wanted to try it out and see how well it worked. Maybe you're not using them already, um, but for Mac, we do have a schedule import feature for a number of different airlines depending on who you fly for or if it's historical or upcoming future data. Yeah, I believe actually through that link on iOS, it automatically provides three months free access to Rosterbuster, but we do have a code if you want to try it. Awesome. Um, and uh, how, oh, he does say Mac as well. So maybe Thomas, you can just show importing schedules on the Mac. I don't know Moto Traveler, what you're importing from or which 
for what airline, but um, uh, Thomas can, I'm going to add you to the stream, Thomas, to just show that uh, import functionality on the Mac. Oh, he's using Mac. Okay, great. Yeah, on the Mac, there's an import schedule feature. So depending on what airline or company you fly for, we have some airlines that are compatible to import into Log10 Pro. If you go to file and you go import schedule, we have a list of some, if your airline uses Flicka, we have some Flicka uh, compatibility here. We have specific airlines, which should work. Um, Ames. Is Southwest on there? You know, <laughs> that's what he's just come up and said. Southwest, Southwest is right there. Um, so all you have to do is, uh, it's, it's specific to every airline how you get your data. And we can we can work with you a little bit if you if you can't figure it out. But we do have an article on our website. Uh, um, if you go to support.coridan.com, um, that will show you if you type in importing airline schedules, it'll give you a little uh, rundown of some examples of how to get your data in there. Um, I don't have any Southwest data on me at the moment, but once you get the Southwest data in there. It looks like you just copy and paste it into this field. So you literally just copy it from your uh, system, the airline system, and then you paste it into this. And then if you hit con continue, you should be able to import your data into the Mac app. Great. I was just trying to find that on uh, to just drop it in the, yeah, here we go. I just got the, I'll just drop this link in. For you, Moto Traveler, there you go. That's the link. Um, and if you run into any issues, of course, with contact support, we can help you out. Um, so I've also got a question here from Hans uh, us around auto calculating relief time. It has a third, half, two third calculations. It should be calculated over full block. Oh, but this is calculated over full block time, whereas mostly the first 30 and last 30 minutes are no relief. And after that, we can divide the remaining flying time between the three or four pilots. So now 10 hours flight makes a third relief, 3.3 hours. Actually, you only have nine hours to divide and one third should be three hours. So that sounds like a, I don't know if you guys have input on that immediately, but that sounds like it may be something to put forward to engineering in terms of how we're calculating the the, the relief time. Um, Thomas, Heather, any thoughts on that? So I was just gonna say, we can absolutely put in a request to have that additional functionality for those auto calculate uh, relief buttons. But if in any circumstance, none of our included features match exactly what your specific airline or, or company might be requiring, you can always manually override um, so that when you tap the button instead of 3.3 hours, you can just tap inside the field, the relief field and make it free. Great, um, maybe you yeah. can show and I think Hans was, uh, I think we mentioned Hans that you contact us for the, uh, um, for that, uh, the first issue you mentioned. So we can definitely look at this at the same time that we handle, that you contact us with support for this. So um, for sure we could look at it. There may be a level of, sp of specificness to the situation um, that might, uh, not be fully encompassed in our relief function. Uh, the, the functionality for the relief that we have in Lockton Pro right now is is pretty basic. You, you tell it how much total time you have and then it'll deduct it from however much you put in relief. Uh, it sounds like there's some levels here, but we can take a look at it more. Oh, maybe you could ask, uh, it depends on the airline in terms of how relief is calculated. So you could have the logbook ask you when your relief starts and ends. It's an interesting idea. Thanks, Match Point eighty nine. Will or Mock Mock Point Match. 
<laughs> losing my mind. Uh, it's, it's hot out here. <laughs> um, so yeah, those are good thoughts. We'll, uh, we can definitely talk to the um, team about it. Options like duty settings would work as to set in settings. When do you want to start and stop relief? Okay, that's good, good thinking. Um, thanks for that. These are really, really helpful thoughts. Um, okay, I'm wondering if we had any other questions that came in prior that we want to maybe cover. Um, setting up currency time items such as day night landings, instrument items. Does somebody want to show the radar tab? And Heather, you're on. Hey there. Uh, so those those currencies are already pre-built in as default groups. If you're if, depending on if you're viewing Mac or iOS, there's options to hide and show groups. There's also options to delete them. Uh, I can't quite recall Thomas or Paul. Do we have these uh, predefined groups? available to download anywhere in our knowledge base or is that just something that that's a write-in to support and we'll help restore those uh no those yeah that's a write-in to support we have limits for multiple countries set up i don't think we have uh, currencies if there's different currencies per country although we are i know we're working on that now actually in terms of creating the groups and having them able to be downloaded but if there's any specific currencies that you want, our support team will be very happy to create them for you. Absolutely. And it is quite easy if you wanted to set it up manually as well. Um, I'm not quite sure if the person who asked this question is here right now. But for example, the day currency group is set up by default to show in the last 90 days. Um, and it's got some color threshold set up for the criteria. So uh, if you're 60 days or more from that currency is going to show green 14 days sorry 60 days or less 14 days or less is going to show orange and then there's no criteria here for the red but you can set it yourself if you want not 55 but five let's say um and again here's one of those instances where we want to match any of the criteria instead of all since these landings don't have to occur within the same flight and the specific criteria for the daytime landings we have set as total landings are greater than or equal to three and total takeoffs are greater than or equal to three. Um, the night group is similar with the one exception that it's looking for night takeoffs and landings, but it's still last 90 days, color thresholds uh, preset up to show 60 and 14, and then you can set your own for the red if you like. And instrument criteria looks like in the last six calendar months, this is one that we get a lot of support requests about actually, um, because people will have satisfied the total approaches as being greater than or equal to six within the last cal six calendar months. Um, but there's one extra criteria in here that you can see, uh, at least for US regulations, you have to also have logged a hold. And the hold field is something in operations that may not be immediately visible, but can definitely be configured. And so if you have an instrument currency group that's showing out of currency, and you're certain that you are current, uh, you have your six total approaches, it may just be that you need to also enable that holds field and log the one hold for the flight where you did that or the multiple flights where you did that, and that'll update your group. Great, thanks. Uh, Heather, actually, Mach point uh, eighty nine. Also, just he said that the currency tab is an issue, and he's on IS and wants to, I guess, create a smart group with sim landings for Part one thirty five. I mean, again, I think that would be no problem to uh, create. And um, feel free to reach out to our support team, and we can create the smart group that you for you specifically. Yeah, it would depend on which one of those currencies. I assume you're talking about a day or night currency. Uh, if your sim landings were logged just as a landing, it should still include them, uh, but perhaps you logged it a little differently because you don't want to include it uh, for other regulatory purposes. Uh, so then you might want to duplicate one of those currency groups and create one for 121 and one for 135 or something like that, or one for 91 and one for 135. Um, 
but yeah, that's something that would be specific to how you log it. Um, but it should be, it should totally be possible. Yeah, just reach out to us uh, and we can help set it up if you give us the parameters you're looking for exactly. Um, we had another question come in from Moto Traveler about uh, is there a way to import a trip using the import function and have this, that same information set up a trip in the trip section of Log10 Pro? I don't think that's possible because we wouldn't, Log10 wouldn't know whether it was a, you know, it would be importing each of the flights, but wouldn't necessarily know they were the same trip. Um, right, but on, on Mac, it would be super easy if you want to yeah, I'll jump switch over to my screen real quick. Um, it's not possible to do it when you import the schedule, but it's really easy to batch edit a bunch of flights. Say this is all the data. You can just highlight a bunch of flights at the same time, hold the control button down, click in those that blue field, and you can just create a trip with all these flights. Uh, so just with a couple, after you import the data, just with a couple clicks, you can make a trip with that same data that you just imported on the Mac. That's a great so there, one. I just uh, created a trip and it has the start date and end date of those flights. And then you can name it what you want. Um, you can fill in all the relevant data right there after you create the trip. So just highlight, right click, create trip from entries. Yep, um, batch edit by highlighting. You can either hold the shift button down, go down to an entry, and it'll fill everything in between. You can click and hold and drag the cursor to highlight a bunch. And then you can um, hold the control key down and you'll get a couple shortcuts here where you can share those flights or you can create a trip with those flights. Great. Um, so uh, Hans was just asking uh, whether the currency settings, once you set them in one logbook, they would automatically sync with the other logbooks you're using. And that should happen. I know you were having issues with your um, sync, Hans. Uh, you mentioned that earlier. so. Um, reach out to us at support and we can just make sure that's working correctly. But yes, the um, currency settings, if you shift them in one logbook, they will update and should update in all your other logbooks. So they will show the same currency picture for all three devices. Um, do you get a push warning when a currency is reaching orange, for example, or when you're going over, I can't remember the notification settings. Um, don't know if either of you could have a look at that. Oh, I think Thomas, you're on mute. Yeah, I don't think we, uh, there's only a few notifications you can set up in Log10 Pro. I don't think you can actually get a push notification when an individual group um, is set is getting close. So if, as you can see here, the notifications in Log10 Pro that you can set up though are scheduled flights, future flights, future duty periods, and then expiring certificates will send you a push notification. But it, for individual limit and currency groups, uh, that is not in the settings uh, to be set up. And, uh, for what would be useful to show is in the plan tab, um, that you can, it does highlight if there's gonna be any future issues. Um, I don't know if we have a logbook can, that can show that, but uh, I, Heather, I guess your logbook probably doesn't, we don't have one that has duty in it, but once you have your duty, um, uh, once you have your times, your schedule times set and your schedule duty time set, uh, that and flight time set oh, the plan tab in log here. Why don't we just show the plan tab and the maybe Heather, you could just show the plan tab and show like at the top there, um, you can see the that's the time loop and that basically will highlight all your future flights and it will tell you as well with an alert, a, a yellow alert, if there's any issues with any upcoming flights. So that's very useful to remember. Um, 
Thanks, Mark Point. Uh, I know you got to take off. So uh, <laughs> thanks very much for joining us. Um, uh, and that's that's great. Thanks for the input, Hans, uh, for sure. Um, yeah, so the, the this is what the plan tab was designed for, basically. Um, it will automatically sort the plan tab by the soonest, uh, or the most urgent limit or currency group will automatically sort to the top. So you'll get, se there's several ways within the app to see uh, where your currency and limit status is. Besides colors, the plan tab will reorganize. You're gonna see like little uh, yellow triangles. If you, in the future you see that you're going past a limit or currency group, uh, it's called Insight. And we have an article uh, on our uh, knowledge base that talks about the Insight feature too. Um, I thought your question was more specific to like notifications outside the app, but there's several ways to check this and, and, and make sure you're not exceeding anything within the app. Um, you can set those color thresholds to whatever you want. You can, you can go from yellow to red uh, and you can set the intervals. Um, and this plan tab is a really powerful feature. As Paul said, you can, you can scroll into the future and see where you are in your currency and limit status. It'll recalculate all those things. Um, yeah. I've added a link in the in the chat to that support article, but I do think that's a good idea, Hans, in terms of having a push notification for that, and we can definitely bring that to our team of engineers, yeah. see what they we, think, and definitely would put it forward. That's a good. That is a good feedback. We get quite a few people saying they want more notification um, uh, settings, things like that. So we'll definitely push that one forward. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I just so Hans just wrote in, let's say I'm reaching my 90 day landing currency, I'd like to have a warning to call my OCC that they need to do something about my schedule to save my current currency. Yeah. Yeah, I think you can set up log time pro to, 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 uh, you can set the color thresholds. Uh, um, and you can see if something changes, it starts to flash yellow or red or appear at the top. Yeah, and one, um, thing to, one thing to mention with that is that when you set the threshold, as you're getting closer to the, th the threshold, the, the ones that are the most urgent will come to the top of the plan tab. So uh, yeah, and I hear that in terms of a push message, that would be that would be great because then you're not having to necessarily yeah. the app to look at it. So we'll have a look at that, but just so you know, on that plan tab, everything uh, orders based on urgency. Yeah, good feedback. Yeah, thanks. Great ideas. All right. Um, see if there's uh, any, we are running a little over. We had planned on an hour, so totally understand if anybody has to leave at this point. Thank you so much for joining us. You know, we'll hang out for a little longer. If there are more questions, definitely want to be available. Um, but uh, for those who do have to go, thank you so much for, for joining us. Really, really appreciate you coming and being, being here with us. And hopefully it's been helpful. Yeah, thanks, everybody. It was fun seeing your questions and fun seeing where you're coming from. Right on. So we'll wait a, a minute or so, see if there's any other questions here. Yeah, and for everybody that we mentioned to reach out to our support staff, we we'll, we will be getting back to you shortly. For sure, and and this is the from iOS to to uh, access uh, support. If you want to ask any questions, we got a lot of a great team of support staff who are totally ready and willing to help. So just more help, contact support. <laughs> Thanks, Science. We love you too. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, thanks a lot, everyone. Again, we'll sign off now and um, yeah, we'll keep doing this. So look out for the emails with uh, new live streams. If you have any ideas as to uh, what you might want us to cover in a webinar or, or multiple topics you want to co cover in a re webinar, please uh, reach out to support and, and let us know. Um, would love to hear your ideas.
for uh, getting a next live stream webinar together. Thanks a lot. Oh, got Hans asking about the schedule import we mentioned. That's on Mac. Just quickly show where that is again. Thomas, I got you on the screen there. So in the file menu, then import schedule. There you go. And then choose your airline. Choose your airline. There you go. This is on the Mac. There you go. And then you cut and paste. Um, uh, Kale, yeah, um, di go ahead. Different airlines are different. Some have want you to s submit a, a PDF. Others want you to cut and paste. It depends on your system, your airline. I guess it's asking not about, all. Are, is KLM covered on on our on the Mac? Well, schedule importing is Mac only. Uh, with my yeah, iPhone or my iPad. I think Hans is asking on the Mac as well. I'm just wondering whether KLM is on, on our, yeah. Yeah, there looks you. like we have KLM on here. Yeah, so you just go to yeah. File, Import Schedule, KLM, and then follow the instructions. Paste the, cut and paste the schedule from your... Uh, Usually, for uh, again, uh, every airline's different, so I can't tell you how to get your specific airline information. But for the most part, it's wherever you would view like your uh, monthly sc schedule, like a month at a time or whatever. Um, the schedule importer is really for future and current schedules. Um, so it's wherever you would view that data is is usually what you would copy and paste. Sure. And just to say to Hans, you, you can't do it on the iPhone or iPad uh, through Log10. You have to use our, our partner app, um, which is Roster Buster um, for the iPhone or iPad. But I understand you have Mac, iPhone, and iPad. And once we get your sync issues sorted out, um, you'll be able to import your schedule here on your Mac, and it will automatically populate on your iPhone and iPad. So um so we should be able to get you set up no problem to do this with uh your klm schedule with the three devices that you have so um yeah so so please reach out to support as we we chatted about and we can we can figure it all out for you <laughs> sorry sorry hans uh yeah we're we're working on it. You've you've given us a lot of ideas to pass on to our engineering team. So I really appreciate you taking part and and uh, and being so engaged. It's really helpful to us because uh, every pretty much every single feature on Log10 Pro has been developed as a result of someone like you who's asking for something and saying, "Can you please uh, uh, create this functionality?" So uh, it's really helpful to have your input. All right. There's always a, it's always, we have this little delay. So I never know when I always feel a little guilty hanging up. So we'll just hang on for another minute or so, see if anything else uh, comes up. Um, but we are taking all of these ideas and thoughts uh, away with us and I'll go to the rest of the team. Um, and uh, thanks again to everyone for uh, who joined in. Really appreciate you being here with us. Yeah, the automatic thing would be a great idea, Hans. Thanks for the, uh, it's definitely something we've got in our minds for sure. Great. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, as I say, don't hesitate to contact our support team for any other questions or help you might need. Um, and uh, I'll thank my co-presenters. I'll just go back there. Yeah, there we are. Team. Uh, <laughs> thanks, I do actually 
actually, I see a quick question that came in from Derek Smith. Uh, oh. He's saying at the end of the calendar year, I'd like to start logging the new year on a new page for your reports. Um, this can definitely be done by defining the date range for when you would like the report to start. And if you want to have cumulative hours or exclusive hours to that date range, that's an option as well. Um, trying to determine if, for example, I can show on iPad really quickly if you want to switch over to my screen, or we can always write yeah. it to the report and determine. Oh, hang on. Here we go. You're in. Awesome. All right. So I will see. Let's say that we want to show a specific year. Uh, let's say for the year 2020. I'm going to just go ahead and create a new smart group. And we will call it, I don't type very often in my iPad, so forgive my errors. Uh, we do want a static date range. And we can define in here, it's gonna be from January 1st, 2020, and ending on December 31st, 2020. All the other criteria we can leave as is, except for we wanna delete this one. So no criteria, but we did define the start and end date. And not sure if any entries, oh good, okay. So we've got a couple entries in here for 2020. So then I'm gonna go to reports. And one of our more popular ones is the Jefferson Pro Pilot Log 27. In that report configuration, we can say filter group to that smart group that we made and we can leave everything else as is and tap on generate, shield your eyes. And this is how you're gonna be able to grab totals that um, are exclusive to that date range. So you can see totals this page, it doesn't start with any amount forwarded. Um, and then when you go to print options, you can always leave off the cover page if you, if you like. And then back in configure report again, we can say this year, if we wanna have cumulative totals, and that's for filter group, all entries. Shield your eyes one more time. Uh, so now we've got amount forwarded and it's starting from the first day of the year or any year that you define. There's an option to put a custom date range um, within that generate report configuration as well. And, and it's the same on Mac. Great, thanks a lot, Heather. That's great. Hopefully that answers answers your question, Derek. And uh, if not, feel free to reach out to support, and we can help you with that uh, as well. Cool. Yeah. If, if if alternately, if you wanted one big report, but you just wanted page breaks after each year, that is a really easy custom report to make. And uh, if you wanted to reach out to support, we could put we could help you out with that real quick. That's great. Thanks, everyone. All right. Well, dare I? <laughs> dare we end it? No, I don't know. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's call it a night. Thank you so much. Thanks to uh, Heather and Thomas. I'll just show our faces one more time. And uh, thanks, guys. Great, great job. So appreciate your. Uh, your uh, work. Off we go. Okay. Thanks a lot. See you later. Thomas is out. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hey. Bye guys. Thank you.